Hi everyone, it's Andrea here and I'm here today with my October mid-month wrap-up. So this is all of the books that I've read so far in the month of October going from the 1st to the 16th. Today being the 17th obviously Spookathon started so I thought it'd be nice to do a wrap-up before things really kick off into high gear with Spookathon. So the first book I read in October was The Ice Cream Blonde, The Whirlwind Life and Mysterious Death of Screwball Comedian Th Thelma Todd by Michelle Morgan. Now you know I read this, I gave it 5 out of 5 stars and I have done a review on it which I will link down below. The second book I completed in October was J. Christoph's Nevernight. I gave this 4 out of 5 stars and again I have posted a review so I will link that down below for you as well if you want to check that out. On to the ones I haven't reviewed. Oh, now this was uh, one I wanted to pick up a while ago, but a friend of mine really recommended it, said I've got to read it, so I picked it up, and that's A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness. I will be honest with you, I gave it five out of five stars. I literally bawled my eyes out at the end. I sat there on the edge of the bed, hugging the book sobbing my heart out. I can't wait to see the film when it comes out um, and a bit more about that soon. I'll talk to you about that in a minute about films and books. I loved it. Absolutely fabulous. The illustrations in it as well. Very dark, very almost gothic but oh what a wonderful book. If you haven't read it I really recommend you pick up this book. Next was Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. Um, I gave this four out of five stars and I really really enjoyed this. Um, yeah I mean I've never really written or read any fan fiction but I totally get the idea of just wanting to be on your own in your own little world either reading or writing, um, dreaming about something you love. I can totally get Katha Ren is your obnoxious sister who just wants to do everything. Um, basically she's had her lead taken off so to speak and she's run wild um, with some not very good consequences. But I really enjoyed this book. I gave it 4 out of 5. Everybody seems to love it and I did as well. So yes, 4 out of 5 for Rainbow Rowell. Fangirl. Um, I then read the next one in the Chronicles of St Mary which is No Time Like the Past, again a 4 out of 5 I think, or a 5 out of 5, I'm not actually sure. So this time, yes, they just carry on. Um, so St Mary's has been rebuilt and it's business as usual for the hu history department. But first there's a little matter of a 17th century ghost that only Mr Markham can see. Not to mention the minor inconvenience of being trapped in the Great Fire of London and an unfortunately timed comfort break at Thermo Pile, leaving the fate of the Western world hanging in the bad balance. So I'm really enjoying this. This is the fifth one in the Chronicles of St Mary's. Um, I've still got six and seven to go. Eight is due out next year. This is my, one of my favourite series. It's, it's not horrendously big. It's just fun. So I like that one. After that, a modern classic, a novella, Truman Capote's A Breakfast at Tiffany's. This is the second book this month that I've read that's got a film of it. So that's quite interesting and I'll come on to that later. I did enjoy it. It's obviously different than the film. Um, it's quite sad. But I, I, I mean, I gave it three out of five um but I really enjoyed it I mean I'll probably read that one again I think these sorts of things need to be read more than once to truly appreciate them but yes I really enjoyed Breakfast at Tiffany's I do like the fact they've got a lovely picture of the lovely Audrey on the cover so after that heartbreakingness I decided to go back into my childhood and read the second of the famous five books which is five, go adventuring again. We're back at Christmas at Kieran Cottage for the Christmas holidays, and they still manage to find an adventure. I love these, they're nice, simple little reads. They don't take too long, you usually read one in one sitting. Again, four out of five stars for Enid Blyton. I love Enid Blyton books. Next, another one of my favourite authors. The Witch's Vacuum Cleaner by the fantastically funny Terry Pratchett. I, this lovely 14 funny stories, 
written in Terry Pratchett's early career when he was a journalist just starting out and then he um, worked on them prior to his death in 2015 now in this lovely hardback volume with some lovely illustrations let's see who illustrates it I think they do um, Mark Beach is the illustrator recommend it if I had kids I'd be reading this to my kids in bed absolutely it's fantastic and three more to go yes again a very good month 11 books um, so the next book I read was Scarlet by Marissa Mayer so this picks off where Cinder left off Cinder is now in jail and she needs to escape because she learns that she is Princess Celine she meets Scarlet Red Riding Hood eventually their worlds collide um, and we find out that Scarlet's grandmother Michelle Benoit helped uh, Cinder when she was injured um, by her aunt Lavana, Lavana, whatever they call the bitch. Loved it. Can't wait to pick up the next of the Lunar Chronicles. I'll probably try and get to that sometime in November, which is Cress. I, these are really good. They're just so nice to just, oh, sit in bed and just a cup of tea and a bar of chocolate and just sit there and just read through them. Absolutely adored this one. It was a four out of five. Yay! And I must admit, I really, really do love the, the Lunar Chronicles. Very, very pleased. The next book was one of the books I picked up in Hey on Why, and that is The Complete Jack, The Ripper by Donald Rumbelow, new and completely revised edition. So, this is, in my opinion, one of the Jack the Ripper books that if you are interested in the Ripper case, you have to read. I gave this five out of five stars. Donald Rumbelow takes you through the case, through the victims, through the chronology, then through the suspects, why they're su suspected, how they could be the killer, and then how they couldn't be the killer because the existing evidence such as it is can prove them otherwise put them in other places at the end it gives us uh, there's a section on the ripper in books movies theatre so fictional ripper stuff so from Alfred Hitchcock's The Lodger which was one of his first films to I can't remember to a stage play a stage musical and so on various things and at the end there is a little bit about other serial killers that were uh, rather like Jack. So we've got the Dusseldorf Ripper, uh, a killer in the 60s in London called Jack the Stripper, and of course, Peter Sutcliffe, the Yorkshire Ripper. There's a bit about that as well. So this is a five out of five read. I will do a bit more in-depth review on this one shortly. Um, but yeah, recommended, absolutely. Now, the last book I finished before Spookathon started was the Jack the Ripper book I bought from the works, which is has the posters and letters in it and various bits and pieces. It's a nice little introduction to the case. I'd only give it about a two out of five. If you want proper information on the case, you're better off going for Donald Rumbelow's or CSA, CSI Whitechapel, which is a really good one. Um, but this one, it's, it's a nice read if you collect in the books. I am collecting the books, but it is nothing really new in there, but I did enjoy it. And that was a two out of five. Now. Going back to Breakfast at Kif Tiffany's and Monsicles. And there are some uh, and other books that I've read that have been made into movies such as The Lovely Bones, um, Miss Peregrine's Peculiar Children. What I was wondering is, would you like a feature where I watch the film and read the book and then compare the two and give my verdict on whether I prefer the film or the book because in some cases I prefer the book and in some cases I prefer the film um, so let me know in the comments below if you uh, would be interested in a feature like this it wouldn't be every month because if I haven't got the film I've either got to watch it at the cinema or I've got to buy it and Christmas is coming but let me know and if, if you are interested I will start that feature um, hopefully in, in November so those are the first 11 books I have read this month. Um, how are you doing? What have you been reading? Let me know down in the comments below if you've read any of these books. Or if there's anything you think I should be reading, let me know. I'll, I'll have a look, see if it's something I, I'm going to pick up. I pick up anything. As you will see from the book haul I'll be doing at the end of the month because I've bought more books. So that's all for me now. If you've liked this video, give it a big thumbs up. And of course, don't forget to share, comment, and of course, subscribe. And I will see you soon. Bye.